Hi everyone, this is Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Art Studio. And uh, I recently had a client who had purchased this cat from me several years ago. And I saw her at a quilt show this weekend and she says, you know, I still haven't quilted that cat. She goes, I'm petrified to do it. And I said, why? She goes, well, I just don't have any way or, or I have no knowledge on how, how to color it. And I, th I thought about some of my older kits and realized that um, I've actually changed the way that I do things. I kind of used to leave it up to everyone to kind of color it themselves. Uh, but I thought, well, you know, I'm going to do kind of a catch-all video on ink tense pencils. At the same time, uh, try to explain how I do some of my um, coloring diagrams now and the process that I do when I when I create these kits. So this may be a slightly long video. Hopefully I'm gonna to try to keep it under 15 minutes. But I, what I wanna to try to do today is go through my process on how I go about coloring this and setting up my um, instructions. So this was the cat that she saw in the uh, quilt shop when she bought her uh, blank uh, about three or four years ago. And to be honest with you, I can look at this and kind of guess what colors that I used, um, but I, I, I don't know right off the bat. The other criteria that she had is she ended up buying the 36 pencil tin of ink tense pencils. So I knew what colors she had on hand to be able to do this. So what I did is I went out and stitched another one of these and I actually printed off Derwent's list of colors and they have a list of each one of the tins and in this particular case the purple one is the 10 of 36 so i was able to look at all of the little purple dots and figure out what colors were in her tin and then uh the next thing that i did was and and bear with me this is what i do when i when i have a a, a bad stitch out i actually use them to draw on <laughs> Uh, down the road. So I, I try to use up everything without throwing things away. So what I did was I kind of looked at my cat and let me actually turn this around. This be upside down for most of you. I'm going to just fold it in half so you can see it better. But I pulled out a bunch of ink tense pencils and I encourage everybody to do this, by the way, no matter what your kit is. And I just started coloring and used a bit of fabric medium to get an idea of the colors that I thought matched the cat's original colors. Uh, in fact, one of them I decided this is burnt orange and I thought it was maybe a little too orange, so I'm switching and going to use baked earth. And then here you can see what I did was, um, there's a lot of blue combos on the cat. So I used iris, which is light, and then peacock, which is dark, to see what they looked like as, as merged together or blended together. So, this is one of the things I always tell people, this is, you really should do this on a scrap piece of fabric to get an idea of what each one of your colors look like if you have never used ink tense pencils before. Okay, so now that I've agreed on what my colors are going to be, the next step, and I don't really have a way of showing you this um, because it's on my computer, but typically what I do is I list these out on an Excel spreadsheet and I give a number to each one of them and then I go in and I create diagrams of each part of the cat. So that is effectively what I'm doing now is just following the original design and coloring and then it turns into a color by number. Okay, that having been said, now we're going to color the cat and really this is to try to review some of the ways of using ink tense pencils and some of the ways of how I set up my uh, paint by number stuff. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a paintbrush and this has been sitting in water. So that everything you want to do is you, you definitely want to number one, you shouldn't be leaving your paintbrushes in water. So do as I say, not as I do. Um, and, and dry it off. Really get all that water out of there because water is devastating to any of these. Uh, if, if I touch this with any kind of water and it has color, it will immediately spread and bleed. 
Hence the reason for the fabric medium. Now, many of you know that I make my own fabric medium, but of course you can use um, any kind of fabric medium that you get at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, um, you know, Americana, Plaid, Ceramicraft, all of them are, are, are good uh, fabric mediums to use to set the color. Uh, I actually like to make my own. Uh, I use ProChemical ingredients, uh, ProChemical and Dye out of Massachusetts. Uh, and I actually put a little bit of pearlescent in mine to kind of get a bit, a bit of a shimmer. Okay, I'm going to just do some quick coloring on here to give you some ideas on how to do some of the methods of coloring with Inktense pencils. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my Shiraz. You can probably see that name. And I'm gonna pull the original cat back over and show you the dark areas in here. Now, I believe I used a fabric marker on, on the, but Shiraz is kind of a deep burgundy similar to this color. And in fact, I've already used it here. Maybe a tiny bit more reddish than the original, but I still like the color. And this is a checkerboard. Um, so I'm just gonna come in here and start coloring some of these. Now, here's a quick tip, uh, and I'm, I'm doing this backwards. So again, do as I say, not as I do. But uh, usually you, what you'd like to do is start out you doing your lighter colors. You'll notice I've done a lot of the yellows already and the pink. Um, and the reason is, is that if you put down the lighter color, in fact, let's do that. Let me just switch over and I'll grab the fuchsia that I'm using here. You really should color with all of your light colors first and let them dry. That way you don't have to worry about the dark colors bleeding into the lighter colors. However, if the light colors bleed into the dark, the dark is gonna cover up. So I'm just gonna color a couple of these so that you can see how I do this. And I'm gonna dip my brush into the fabric medium, come over and start putting the fabric medium down. And on this one, I'm being very careful. I don't get the fabric medium into the Shiraz uh, so that it bleeds into my pink. Maybe this is good. Now you can see what why you don't wanna do this. You definitely wanna try to get all of your pink down first. Now, um, looking at my coloring on the original, that pink is a little darker than what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna come back over while it's still wet and you'll notice how very deep the color is when you take a dry pencil and color on wet fabric. So this is called the dry on wet method. Uh, the first thing that you saw was actually dry on dry where you take a dry pencil on dry fabric and color it and then place a fabric medium. Since it's still wet, all I'm going to do is just kind of I call it mushing or squishing my brush up against the stitch line in order to get all the color along the stitching and, and, and cover up the block completely. Okay, so that is a dry on dry method and a wet on wet method. Now, um, I'm going to actually come over here and start coloring these. And uh, before I do anything, however, I'm going to take my brush rinse it out in water, just plain water. And then once again, I'm going to either paper towel it dry or have a, a rag like I'm doing to, to dry it completely and get rid of the water. Now on the original, um, there is quite a bit of shading. And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna show you the shading here and I'm gonna show you the shading here. And I'm going to reference how I diagram this out on the coloring charts. On something like this, you'll normally see a two slash three or a three slash four. And what that means is I'm gonna take the lighter color in, that in this particular case, which is tangerine, and then I'm gonna cover over the entire block area. And then I'm gonna come back with my, let me find it, it's chili red. And I'm going to deepen just the bottom to kind of make it a, a, a more heavily, more reddish color towards the back. So let me show you how to do that. Very easy. Um, and usually what I like to do, if depending on the shading, 
Um, I like to go in the direction, color in the direction of the shading. So I'm just going to pick this square right here first. And notice I'm, I'm going in the direction on how the shading is supposed to work. Now, I mean, if the shading were, say, dark up here to light here, I would probably go in, a, in the opposite direction. But in this case, I'm, I'm moving the orange. Yeah, I know I do a little bit here, but that's just to get in all these tight, tight corners. This is a very heavily stitched pattern. This is an urban thread pattern called Mahindi Cat. They're, they have a bunch of these uh, Mahindi animals out on their website, and I really, really, really like them, but the cat is my favorite because I'm a cat person. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my chili red. Make sure it's chili red, yes. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to color over here, not heavily yet. I just want to lay down some color first. Okay, then I'm going to take my brush and dip it in the fabric medium. And I like to work light to dark. So I'm going to come up here with a tangerine and I'm going to move the fabric medium down and you'll see it starts blending those two colors together. This is still one of my absolute all-time favorite methodologies of shading. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways of doing it, but this is my tried and true way. Okay, now I do want that to be maybe slightly deeper red down here at the bottom. So just down here at the bottom, I'm just going to scribble a little bit more color down there to get it really into that stitch line. And then since I've already blended the orange up, I'm just going to take this extra color and move it upwards to get a little bit more of the shade value to where it fades into the orange from the red. And that's a very good look, actually. I'm very happy with that. Okay, so again, if you see a 2 slash 3 or 9 slash 11, that's usually what it means. If you look here on this yellow and orange, I placed the yellow down first and then came over it with sienna gold here. So you can see what it looks like finished, um, but I'm very happy with that orange and uh, we'll you know, continue to color that later. Now, last but not least, um, and I wanna make sure that uh, I'm not taking too much time because Oh, 12 minutes already. Okay, I'm going to hurry so we can keep this under 15 minutes. I'm going to do the coloring that's here on this leg. Now, those are a wide variety of colors, and I wasn't really happy with how that looked. So hopefully, after uh, several years of practice, I can actually make it look a little bit better than it does there. So once again, the colors in this are stacked. When they're stacked on top of one another, you're going to want to color, and actually you should start light to dark. Always go light to dark. So it starts out yellow here. I'm just scribbling a bit of yellow. And then it goes to the gold, which is sienna gold in this case. And then the orange, which is tangerine. And notice I overlap each color in this case, it's about an eighth of an inch, but that helps with the blending when you go to put the fabric medium down. The next color I'm going to choose is my chili red. Hang on, where did I put it? Ah, it's right next to me. Okay, and I'm gonna come in with the chili red. And again, overlapping that color. Then I'm gonna come in with a bit of the Shiraz. Hmm. Maybe not, maybe I think I'm gonna go to fuchsia. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go choose the fuchsia because now I wanna go from kind of red to pinkish. Like I said, I think I like, I'm gonna like this coloring better than what I did originally. And then last but not least, kind of a, a it's called mauve, but it really comes across as purple. So this last little area, ah, yes, that's exactly what I want. This last little area, I'm gonna come in and color purple. Okay, now you have this kind of rainbow effect. How do you put the fabric medium on there? Very easily, once again, clean your brush, get it dry, dip it into the fabric medium, and start with the yellow and pull forward. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, this is great. 
very happy with this. Now, once you get up here to the purple, you know, work just inside the purple area a little bit to kind of get rid of any pencil marks, which is what my problem was with the other one. I didn't like all the pencil marks, so I wanted to work on how to get rid of that, which basically the scrubbing method that I use here will get rid of most of your pencil marks. When you when you do use your ink tense pencils, you want the pencil tip to really be kind of on the dull side. Don't make it super sharp. Okay, so I'm gonna just drag a bit of the color down just, just to blend it into the reds and to that fuchsia. Um, and then maybe dip my fabric medium in a little bit. Uh, I actually sometimes will clean the brush with the fabric medium uh, just to test it. And then again, work the yellow up into the orange. So I'm kind of working this from both directions. So there you have it. There are some blending techniques um, for this particular cat. Um, I'm going to finish this cat um, and, and do it the, basically the same methods that I used on the other one. But I just wanted to clean this up a bit. You know, it's always nice to go back and do it a second time. You always do a much better job. One last technique, though, I do want to show you. And I'm going to do that with this Shiraz. Um, and I'm going to come here between these two fuchsias since they're already kind of on the process of dying. If you really want a super intense color, the easiest way to do it is dip the tip of your pencil into the fabric medium and get a little bit of fabric medium on the tip of the, of the uh, pencil tip. And then just start rubbing. And you'll see right off the bat how that gives you a really extraordinarily very vivid, very deep uh, tone for that particular color. And once you put it down, come back in with a bit of fabric medium and blend it and get it into that to those corners. That looks great. Um, and do it, try it again, try to do it. That's why, again, you always want to go light to dark, uh, you know, because then it, it helps you uh, from keeping it blend, bleeding into the other. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me at medinadomarts at aol.com. That's M-E-D-I-N-A-D-O-M-A-R-T-S at aol.com. Thanks again for watching.